Hey guys, Mr. P. In this video, we're gonna talk about biotic and abiotic factors. So what is a biotic factor? What is an abiotic factor? How biotic factors are going to help influence abiotic factors and how abiotic factors influence biotic factors. Let's go. So when you look at a particular environment, you always notice, if you're like me, the biotic factors first. Those are the things that are living. Those are obviously the things that are maybe more appreciative, okay, or the things that are, are easier to appreciate. And so when we look at just this one snapshot, you see a variety of different biotic factors. And when I say biotic factor, I mean any living part of the environment with which an organism might interact. So if it is a living part of the environment, like a tree, like the zebra, like the crane, those are all considered biotic factors because they are in fact alive. But there are also a variety of abiotic factors that are any non-living part of the environment in which an organism might interact. These are things that are less likely to stand out to you. There are things that maybe are more taken for granted, okay? Things like air, water, soil, CO2, okay? Those are all things that are abiotic, in fact, not alive. So when we look at this picture, we see a variety of things like, for, in, for instance, or for an example, the elephant, that is a biotic factor. The zebras, those are a bi biotic factor as well. The cranes, those are obviously alive, so they are biotic factors. The trees are biotic factors as well. You have a variety of grasses. Now I know a lot of the grasses in this particular picture are dormant, they're yellow, but the grass is there and those would be still alive and so those are considered biotic factors as well. But not readily available to us in this picture, there are a variety of other biotic factors as well, like predators of all of these, okay? A lion is a predator of the zebra. The lion is alive and that lion preys on the zebras that are pictured in this particular image. And so that would be an interaction between biotic factors. Prey items of these organisms. So the cranes would eat fish. The fish may be in the water. We don't know, they can't be seen here, but those are also alive. And so those are organisms or biotic factors that are influenced or can help influence the population of the cranes in this particular uh, image. All of these organisms have gut bacteria that are symbiotically uh, part. Uh, it's a symbiotic relationship, usually mutualistic, in which the uh, gut bacteria provided a house or a home, their particular environment, and they provide uh, essential vitamins to the living things that are pictured in this particular picture. Those would all be biotic factors. Algae, there would be algae in the water, there would be bacteria in the water, okay? Uh, all of those things are li living factors, and so we call those biotic factors. Again, the prefix bio means life, so biotic factors would be living factors. The abiotic factors in this particular image, uh, there are a bunch of them as well, and so things like sunlight, okay? There is sun, we can see that it is daytime in this picture, so there is sunlight. Sunlight is not alive, but it does impact the living things and the non-living things in this particular environment. The temperature probably is hot, okay? We know that Africa is typically hot. Uh, it looks like it's kind of a drought situation, but the temperature would be a non-living abiotic factor that would influence the, uh, the organisms pictured in this particular image. Precipitation, the amount of precipitation, the type of precipitation, all of those are abiotic factors. The humidity is an abiotic factor, it's not alive. Okay, the wind is also an abiotic factor, not alive. Water currents, now there probably isn't too many currents in this particular pond, but there are other bodies of water in which water currents would be a significant factor that would influence not only temperature, but precipitation and humidity related to the environments that the water currents are uh, a part of. Wind currents would be another uh, abiotic factor. pH, both the pH of water and the pH of the soil can help influence whether or not plants can grow, whether or not organisms can drink the water, whether aquatic organisms can live in the water, okay? Oxygenation, and uh, we'll go ahead and throw CO2 concentration in there as well. If we focus in on some abiotic and biotic factors together, we can then start to kind of appreciate how biotic and abiotic factors influence each other. So if we focus in on the pond in the previous slide and we look at a frog, the frog is going to have many abiotic factors as well as biotic factors 
that are going to strongly influence this particular organism. This would be a bullfrog, okay? The sand is an abiotic factor. The mud is an abiotic factor. The water is also an abiotic factor. But part of the muck that is made up of the abiotic factors of sand, mud, and water is also going to house a lot of decomposing plant matter. Even though the plant matter in this particular situation is currently dead, it was alive at one point, and so it is considered a biotic factor. We also have a lot of algae and bacteria that would be part of that pond muck, uh, and as well as fungi, okay, or fungus. When you put all six of those biotic and abiotic factors together, it creates the muck that the, that the, the frog is strongly attracted to and helps to maintain the moisture of its skin and provide it an environment in which it lives. When we kind of zoom out a little bit and we look at the right image, we see that there are also a variety of uh, abiotic and biotic factors as well. Sunlight would be an abiotic factor. Temperature would be an abiotic factor. Dry winds would be a, an abiotic factor, but things like trees are alive, and so that would be a biotic factor. Humidity is also an abiotic factor. It's important to note that while the trees are a biotic factor, those trees, whether they provide shade, whether they provide a canopy, whether they provide um, a place in which the wind can't get to, it's gonna hold humidity. And so abiotic conditions around a pond's mucky shore are shaped by organisms that are alive. How would this tall canopy help to shape the environment in which uh, organisms can live under it? These trees are gonna provide shade, which is gonna decrease the temperature. They're gonna provide a canopy and a wind block, which is going to draw, uh, block the winds from reaching the shore. It's also gonna hold the humidity in, which is gonna raise the humidity under that canopy in order to provide a lot of beneficial conditions for this particular organism, which is a frog. Okay, tree roots help determine how much soil washes into the pond during heavy rains. It's called erosion. And so the tree roots would be the biotic factor and the heavy rains or the precipitation amounts would be the abiotic factor. Again, you can see that this is a biotic factor affecting the abiotic. And you also could see uh, instances in which abiotic helps to impact the biotic. If pine trees grow nearby, decomposing needles make the soil more acidic, meaning it drops the pH, makes it more acidic. And then on the other side, if you have decomposing oak leaves, it will help to make the soil more alkaline. So if you have a pond or groundwater around a lot of pine trees, it's gonna be uh, more of an acidic environment. But if it's more of an oak stand or an oak grove, it's gonna make the soil and water more alkaline. Both of those conditions, the acidic and alkaline conditions are both an abiotic factor that are strongly influenced by the uh, biotic factor, which is the actual trees. That's it for a quick vid on the abiotic and biotic factors and how biotic factors can influence abiotic factors and, and how abiotic factors can influence biotic. If you have questions, bring those to class or drop them in the comments. If you want to give a thumbs up, I would appreciate it. If you want to subscribe to the channel, I would also appreciate it. See ya.